Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well, keeping safe, staying warm, and working on your jewelry. Now, if you're new here, just know that this is a jewelry making channel, but I do throw in other content from time to time, okay? But for the most part, we stick to jewelry making. So if you're new, welcome to my channel. And if you've been a loyal follower, thank you so much for watching my channel and supporting me. I really do appreciate it. And I gotta say, guys, you were so amazing the other day when I posted about the negativity on my channel. You left me such beautiful comments and I really, really, truly appreciate it. I really do. You're the reason why I keep making videos, okay? Whenever I see beautiful comments like that, it just motivates me and it makes me want to make more videos for you. I enjoy doing this job. I really do. I'm calling it a job even though I'm not getting paid, but I truly do enjoy it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be making these videos. So anyway, guys, I think most of the time when I get negativity on this channel, it's through comments that I think they're trying to be helpful. I really do. But when it's a personal attack, that's where I draw the line and either I'll block that viewer, okay, or I'll delete the comment because I don't want that kind of negativity on this channel. But like I said, most of your comments are just wonderful and I really do appreciate, I feed off them, okay, I, I, I feed off your comments. I read every single one of them, okay, and that's what motivates me and keeps me going. But anyway guys, I have a very nice tutorial for you today. I'm going to be using beads from DGC's treasure bag for the month of January. The name of that bag was Shiny New Year. And if you haven't seen that unboxing video, I'll link it down below so you can go check it out. So anyway guys, another thing I want to say is that um, somebody left a comment the other day about that I'm not being genuine because I don't make minimalist jewelry even though I wear minimalist jewelry. The thing about that is that if I were to make a tutorial on a minimalist necklace, most of the time it's going to be one little bead or one little crystal on a chain, okay? And that's not really a tutorial. So what you're going to see on my channel are mostly uh, pieces that are a little bit more complicated than a minimalist necklace, okay? Because a minimalist necklace is basically one little bead on a chain, that's all it is, okay? Or something that's very simple. The other thing I want to say about that is that I do wear minimalist jewelry because I live in the DC area and that's what the women wear around here, okay? Gosh, I really feel like I'm having to explain myself lately. But anyway guys, I know I've done minimalist pieces before, I've done bracelets and necklaces before, I don't do them very often, but that's the reason why, because most of the time they're very, very simple to make, okay? And I have a rule of thumb on this channel. I will never make something that I would not personally wear, okay? This viewer also said that uh, I'm not being genuine because I'm not making pieces that I would wear. Well, she obviously doesn't know what I wear because she doesn't live with me, okay? But I would never make a piece that I would never wear myself, okay? That's my number one rule. All right, just so you know. So anyway, guys, that's enough talking for today. I want to remind you that I'm going to leave a list of all the materials that I'm going to be using down below in the description section of this video. And I'm also going to leave some timestamps in case you want to skip forward to any portion of the video, okay? And if you haven't subscribed, please think about doing so because it truly does motivate me and it helps my channel. So now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial. So here are the beads that we're going to be working with. Let me pull them out of the packets. Okay, I pulled the beads out as you can see and what inspired the necklace was this beautiful pendant. It is so gorgeous. I love this pendant. It's a black glass bullet pendant and it measures 57 by 9 millimeters. So this is what inspired the necklace and because it's black, I wanted to use a whole bunch of other black beads. And here we have some 6 millimeter smooth rounds. We have some teardrop shaped faceted electroplated beads. These are also black. We have some four millimeter rainbow plated smooth rounds. And then we have these very interesting rondelles. They're flat on the top and bottom, as you can see. And they actually do have some rainbow plating as well, but they're relatively large. They're 11 by eight millimeters in dimension. And here we have some smaller ones. These are also rainbow plated and they're flat on the top and bottom as well. And they measure seven by four millimeters in dimension. Okay. Then we have these gorgeous oval beads. These are so pretty. Oh my gosh, when I saw these, I fell in love. These are called light gray faceted twist beads. And we actually have five of them. So I'm probably only gonna use four because I want my necklace to be symmetrical. They measure 18 by 13 by six millimeters. And they're actually a light gray color, very pale, okay? We also have some bead caps here. These measure about six millimeters, okay? I wanted to use some silver accents because of this pendant. The pendant has the silver metal. So I wanted to put these bead caps on some of the beads. I'm not sure which ones just yet, but I'm thinking maybe these, but we'll take a look later on. I also have a toggle clasp, as you can see. I'm gonna use a toggle clasp on this necklace. And I have a couple of six millimeter jump rings that came in the bag. 
So let me go ahead and pull some of these beads off the strands and we'll get started. All right, so here are my beads and I pulled out four of these and six of these, okay. One of my viewers left a comment the other day about how I know what to do. Well, the reason I know what to do is because I actually sit down and study the beads and play with the beads before I decide to film my tutorial. Sometimes I do get on here and experiment, but usually I have some idea in my head of what I'm gonna do. I don't just get on here and throw the beads on the beading mat and just wing it. The outcome isn't gonna be 100% great if I do that. I can tell you that right off the bat, okay? So I like to be somewhat prepared. So if you're wondering, you know, why I do things the way I do or how come I know what to do? It's because I've played with the beads ahead of time. I'm just being totally transparent with you, okay? So now you know, <laughs> all right? So like I said, I have played with these a little bit and I'm thinking about doing three different kinds of beaded components. And the reason I decided on doing three is because I'm limited due to the amount of these beads and the amount of these beads, okay? Let me show you what I had in mind. So I was thinking about having this as one component, okay? And I was gonna dress it up a little bit with some bead caps because like I said before, I wanted to add a little bit of metal to tie in with the pendant, okay? And the other thing that the bead caps do is that they protect the bead when I go to do the uh, looping, okay? So this is what it looks like with the bead caps, okay? So when you do your looping, usually you have to bring your pliers up close to your crystal. And I just feel more comfortable when there's something um, protecting the crystal, whether it's a bead cap or another bead of some sort, okay? And I definitely don't wanna crack or damage these beautiful beads. But anyway, I think having the bead caps is gonna help to tie the whole thing in with this pendant, all right? So this is gonna be one of the beaded components, okay? And then the second beaded component that I was thinking about was something with black beads because I wanted the black due to the pendant being black, all right? So what I was thinking about doing is perhaps um, doing a teardrop shaped bead, a round bead in the middle, and then another one like this, okay? So this can be another beaded component, all right? So here are two now. Let me do my third one. The third one I was gonna make a little bit more um, interesting, okay? So I was thinking about using one of these four millimeters, one of these gorgeous rondelles, this one here, and then another rondelle and a four millimeter bead. So this is the third component, and I think that looks really lovely, okay? So here are my three beaded components, and that's basically how I'm gonna build the necklace, all right? So this gives me some idea of what I'm gonna do. So now that I know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go get my wire. I'm gonna be using 18 gauge wire today, okay? I don't have any specific brand, guys, okay? I just use whatever I have in my stash, but I do try to use tarnish resistant wire, okay? And this one's tarnish resistant. It's by Beadsmith, as you can see, okay? So I'm gonna cut myself some two inch pieces, okay? I recommend that you cut yourself a little bit more than you need, especially if you're a beginner, okay? Because um, there's nothing worse than struggling with wire that's too short. Let me organize my workspace a little bit so I have a little bit of room. Now, one of the things I like to do is to straighten my wire before I take it off the spool. It's just a lot easier to straighten it when it's still on the spool. I'm gonna use my Xeron cutters to cut my wire. I don't like to use my expensive Lindstrom's because I try to protect them whenever I can. And so for this kind of job, it just makes more sense to use cutters that are less expensive. And your pieces don't have to be perfectly straight, okay? Okay, I've cut some pieces of wire. I'm probably gonna need more, but I just wanted to get started. Now, since we're using 18 gauge wire, we're gonna do simple loops today. And let me give you a little tip. If you want your loops to close nicely, what you can do is you can cut the end with the flush side of your cutters, okay? So that you have a nice clean cut across the top of that wire, okay? And now we're gonna create a 90 degree bend and I'm gonna place my flat nose pliers about three eighths of an inch down because that's how big I want my loop, okay? You're gonna have to decide for yourself how big you want your loops, okay? Three eighths of an inch gives me a medium sized loop and you're simply gonna give it a bend like that, a 90 degree angle, okay? Just like that. And now I'm gonna come in here with some round nose pliers. I'm gonna grab the wire so that it's flush, okay? And I already know where to put it on my pliers, okay? It all depends on what brand you use. These are by Lindstrom and these are very skinny barrels, okay? So I know that if I put it there, it's gonna give me the right size loop for 3 eighths of an inch. 
And if you're not sure what it is on your pliers, all I can tell you is that you're going to need to experiment. Okay, that's the only way to learn. So once you have it there, you're going to go ahead and give it a turn. And you want to make sure that you close that loop all the way, just like that. Okay, it's as simple as that. And if you need to straighten it out or manipulate it, you can certainly do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and thread on the beads. I'm going to start with the teardrop shaped beads. So it's going to go like this. Okay. And then a six millimeter round. And now another one of these teardrop shaped beads like this. Okay. As you can see, the small side of the teardrop is pointing away from the six millimeter round. So now we're going to form another loop here. And before you do, it's a good idea to check which way this one is opening. Okay. I want this one to open the opposite way. So it's kind of like an S. And the reason I like it like that is because it gives it a little bit more strength. All right. But it really doesn't matter if your loops open on the same side. Okay. It's just personal preference. So in order to achieve that, what I'm going to do now is have the opening of this loop facing that way. Okay. So I'm going to hold it like this. And you want to place your pliers so you have a little bit of space there for the bend. You don't want the pliers right up against the crystal because it'll crack the crystal. You want a little bit of space, okay, just a fraction. And then go ahead and kink it away from you. And now you're going to cut off the excess, leaving yourself 3 eighths of an inch. And you want the flush side facing the component, okay. And now grab the wire with your round nose pliers so that it's flush. And go ahead and loop it. Make sure you close it really well and that's what you should have. Okay. Now you want to make sure the loops are facing the same directions. Sometimes your loops may not loop the way you want them to and you may need to straighten them out and that's very easy to do. You just grab one with a set of pliers, grab the other one with another set of pliers and straighten them out like this. Okay. So there's your first component. Okay. Very simple. So now let's go ahead and build the second component. I'm going to go ahead and cut the end of the wire so that it's flush. And now I'm going to make a 90 degree angle kink right here like this. Grab the wire with your round nose pliers. Make sure it's flush and create the loop. Make sure it's closed. And now I'm going to thread on one of these bead caps one of these beautiful crystals, another bead cap, like this. Check the loop to see which way it's opening. Turn it away from you. Grab the wire, kink it, cut the excess off. And now we're going to make a loop. just like that. And if you need to straighten your loops, go ahead and do it. And now that one's done. Okay. So that's the second component. Now we're going to build the third component. So let's take a piece of wire, snip off the tip so that it's flat. Make a 90 degree angle bend right there. And now we're going to grab the wire and form our loop. Make sure that it's closed. Okay. And for this one, we're going to do a four millimeter round, one of these flat rondelles, tiny ones, one of these large ones, another flat rondelle, small one, and another four millimeter round. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. Once again, you want to check your loop, make sure it's facing away from you, make a 90 degree angle bend. And now snip off the excess and form your loop at this end now. Just like that. And now straighten your loops if you need to. Okay. So here are the three beaded components. And these are basically what's going to form the two strands. 
So I'm going to keep building them until I get my desired length and I'm thinking maybe between 24 and 26 inches. So let me go ahead and speed up the film and I'll meet you back. Okay, I'm back and I finished building all the components as you can see and I had to arrange them like this so you could see them on the screen. And even though they're not connected, I can kind of see that the necklace is going to be a decent length. So I think what I'll do is I'll begin connecting them and then I'll see as I go along whether or not I need to connect all of them or if I need to add more. So let me go ahead and start. And that's very easy guys. You simply take one component like this, open up the loop, Connect the next one and close up your loop like that. Very simple. So once again, open up this loop, take the next component, connect it, and then close up your loop just like that. Okay. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to connect one side and then I'll measure it before I connect the other side. So let me speed up the film. Okay, as you can see, I connected all of the beaded components and now I'm going to go ahead and measure it. Let me move these beaded components up so I have some room. You probably can't see the whole thing on the screen, but I'm going to go ahead and measure it now. So it measures about 13 inches, which is perfect. 13 plus 13 is 26, and that's exactly what I want. Now this pendant measures two and a quarter inches, okay? So the necklace will obviously hang lower. But I'm pretty satisfied with this, guys, okay? Let me show you how I arranged the components. As you can see, I started with a teardrop shaped beads and a six millimeter round in the middle. And then I moved on to this one here with a large rondelle, okay, and the small rondelles. And then again, another one with a teardrop shaped beads and then the gorgeous faceted oval. And then I repeated the same thing. And basically I have the teardrop shaped beads in between each of these um, fancy beads, okay. Let me arrange it like this so you can take a better look. So we have large rondelle, oval, large rondelle, oval, large rondelle, and then in between that are the teardrop shaped beads, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and connect these other ones and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I've connected both strands, so now I'm ready to attach the pendant and that's the easiest part. Here it is. And all we're going to do guys is open up one of these loops like this, connect it to the loop of the pendant, okay, the bail, close up the component and then connect the other strand. And with all your loops, you want to make sure that you close them up really, really well. Okay. So the pendant is attached and I love how it looks. It's so gorgeous. And now all we have to do is attach the toggle clasp. I use jump rings to attach it because I want to give the toggle clasp a little bit more movement. Okay. If you attach the toggle clasp to the beaded component without a jump ring, there's not going to be enough room to close up your toggle clasp. Okay. It's going to be a little bit too stiff. You do want to make sure though, that this loop is very well closed. So there's no chance of the jump ring coming off. Okay. So basically you take the jump ring, attach one portion of your toggle clasp like this, and then just hook it up to the beaded component. Close it up. And these are excellent jump rings because they close really well. There's one side. 
And now let me check this loop before I attach the jump ring. Make sure that it's closed. Attach the jump ring and then attach the other portion of your toggle clasp like this. And close it up. And this necklace is finished. And I love it. I love how it looks. I love the colors. It's difficult to get the whole thing on camera, but here it is, guys. And it's absolutely gorgeous. It's very elegant looking. And I love these beautiful big beads because it really makes a difference. It really dresses up the necklace and makes it very, very interesting. And of course, the sparkle is out of this world. But anyway, as always, I'm going to go ahead and put it on and show you what it looks like. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. such a lovely piece don't you just love it I love the colors I love the sparkle I love beautiful sparkly faceted beads I've always loved them ever since I was a little girl and I absolutely adore this pendant I think it's gorgeous and I knew I had to use it and I'm glad I was able to incorporate it into this necklace I think it turned out gorgeous I hope you like it as well and if you have the beads I hope you can make your own necklace and if you don't have the beads like I said before go to Gina's website and see if you can find the beads she might still have some of them she might even have the pendant, I don't know. But if you don't find it there, you can always just do a Google search and just put in the name of the uh, beads and the dimensions and you might be able to find them. Okay, everybody, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a happy Valentine's Day and I'll see you next time. Bye.